other guys like they live with you? Just like regular families, except regular folks don't get to choose their family. <laughs> we do. How would that work? Depends on you. Why do we make ourselves so much smaller than we are? Pain. That holds us back. Take back your power, Ralph. Welcome, Ralph, son, man of drum. Oh, is your heart pumping? Mine is. That was a snippet of the new dramatic thriller, Manadrome. The film stars Jesse Eisenberg, Adrian Brody, Odessa Young, and Salou Cisse, who is joining us now in studio. Thank you so much for joining us. This movie looks absolutely fantastic. Great. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Of course. So let's talk about what the film is about. Sure. So, you know, it's a thriller that deals with toxic uh, masculinity. Um, it's got a lot of twists and turns. Um, I would say just watch it. <laughs> you no don't words. Give it away. There's no words that I could say right now <laughs> that's going to tell you, you know, that's going to give a summation of this movie. It's, it's, yeah. So I'm getting Fight Club vibes too. I, I tell people, I, I'm glad you picked up on that. I tell people it's almost like a mixture of like Fight Club, um, Taxi Driver, Ooh. and Ang Lee's Brokeback Mountain. Fabulous. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. So let's talk about your journey in the business because mm -hmm. these are some heavy hitters in Hollywood and you're right out there duking it with them, right next to them, <laughs> shoulder to shoulder. I'm just out here duking it with them, man. You're absolutely right. So yeah, so the film's got Jesse Eisenberg, who I admire, who I really had fun working with. Um, obviously, he was, you know, Oscar nominated for, you know, his film. And then Adrian Brody. I mean, he was yeah. an Oscar. He won an Oscar in 2004 mm -hmm. for The Pianist. So it's great for me to be able to like act with these people, with this caliber of actors. You know, it's just a testament to what I've done to get to this point. You know, my training, training with Ivana Chubbuck, going to classes, audition technique, you know, and everything else that it takes. That's incredible. So any, um, how, any stories from the set that you can tell? Does any, are they method actors? Does everybody separate and come back together because it's so intense, this, mo this movie? Well, it's very intense. I'll tell you, Jesse Eisenberg and I have a scene. I don't want to give away any spoilers, okay. but I will say this, that we shot this scene several times. I want to say by like take four or five, and him and I kind of jokingly looked at each other, and he looked at John Trango, the director, <laughs> and he's like, Salut, we're done, right? Like, we're done. We've had enough of this scene, <laughs> you know? So it's a scene that people will know when they see the scene, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's a very climactic scene, and I would say, you know, just be ready for it. It's, 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 a, it's a shocker, for sure. That's incredible. And you're really coming out the gate big. Yeah. What's it like to be you in Hollywood right now <laughs> on a big budget movie of something this magnitude? Ah, uh, you know, it's humbling. You know what I mean? It's humbling. It's also, again, a testament to just hard work pays off, you know, being resilient. It's a marathon. I think a lot of people think maybe you get out here in L.A., you work a, two, a year, two, three years, four years and you're on. No, it's not. It's something that requires a lot of work, a lot of studying. I'm an avid reader. I love books, not just books I have to deal with film and TV and acting, but I also read books, you know, that work on character development. Right now I'm studying Marcus Aurelius. You know, that may help me in a character that I play in the future. I know? love this. So you're thinking big. I am. I'm thinking very, very big. Oscars, Emmys, Golden Globes, SAGs, you know, but again, I'm doing everything in my capacity to make sure that I get to where I need to be. You know what I mean? Because I believe that it's who you become. Once you become that person, then everything else will kind of come to you. You know, it's a culmination of like manifestation, prayer, faith, and everything else. Well, a lot of people who watch this show are aspiring actors. They want to be in your seat. They want to be on the screen. What was it in you? Is it something you were born with or was it your family? You know, um, to be honest with you, when I was 18, I went to college. I didn't really know what I was going to do, but I just knew like first generation. I'm from Africa, Sierra Leone, and education's big. So my mother's like, you're going to college. I didn't know what I was going to study, but I found theater and yeah, I just fell in love with it. You know, fell in love with it. Auditioned for the Laramie Project. It was a play got a lot of different roles in that play, and I really just excelled. And it was the response that I got from the audience. You know, when you're on, 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 on the stage and you can hear people just kind of sniffling, yeah. you know, and in response to what you're doing on stage, it's liberating, you know? So that's kind of what got me into it. And I've just been dedicated ever since. It's been many, many years. It's been probably over two decades now just to get to this point, you know? And you're here, which is incredible. Yeah. I really hope you're taking in this moment because we know you. your name is going to be on billboards everywhere. We're going to see you, you up Thank there you. accepting awards. Thank you. That's the plan. <laughs> that is the plan. And first of all, where can people see Mandrome? So Mandrome is out right now. It's on uh, Apple TV, uh, Amazon Prime, and several other screeners. But uh, it's available. Definitely, if you look for it, you'll find it.
Love it. Yeah. Okay. Can't wait to see manager. I'm with you. So Lucy <laughs> say, you, we, we saw you here first. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So coming up, have you ever considered a career in content creating? Well, I talked to one of the big wigs of Viral Nation who represent lots of online talent to get tips on how to find your niche and make some serious money. What's the biggest tip you've ever gotten? Like 50. $50? Yeah. Has anyone ever tipped a car? You probably know content creators like Mr. Beast. Oh, Ryan, this doll looks very familiar. Looks like somebody I know. That's me. <laughs> and the adorable Ryan of Ryan's World. They're multi-millionaires, but they had to start somewhere. Now today, anything is possible if you have a phone. You can literally make your dream come true no matter what you do. So the days of, yes, I still pitch shows to traditional networks and we still work with them and they're amazing. But the days of those traditional gatekeepers telling you that you can be, have a presence online, do something that the world sees, those days are over. So if you have a phone, and you have a perspective or you're interested in something, you can gain an audience simply by uploading videos to any of sort of the multiple social media platforms out there. Paul Tellner is head of programming for Viral Nation and has worked with some of the biggest names in the business. In my past, I've worked with everyone from The Rock to uh, you name it, to Logan Paul, Jake Paul, Lily Singh, Rhett and Link, JB Smooth, Howie Mandel. I have a huge passion for comedy, both in sort of the traditional sense and also the digital sense. And then a viral nation, we have a full slate of shows that star some of the biggest creators in every genre today, from pranksters to professional athletes. What are the kind of things that you're working on right now that just might, you know, get people's creativity going or even parents who just aren't in the know where it's like, oh, okay, he knows what's cool. <laughs> and, and now yeah. I'll know what's cool too. <laughs> yeah, it's a really great question. You know, I'm really into positivity. I'm into people who make other people laugh, feel good, and brighten up their day. So I'll give you an example. We have this amazing dance troupe called The Basement Gang. The Basement Gang came to sort of fame during the pandemic. They're, they're best buddies. They do funny dances in the basement, hence The Basement Gang. And they're incredible dancers, but they're funny. And it's not just about the dancing, which is terrific. It's about the chemistry and the camaraderie between these, these guys and their best friends. And that's something I'm developing into a TV show right now with, with a great company out of Toronto. And, you know, what I identified in those guys is they're like everybody else. They just want to have fun. They want to dance. They want to be silly. And we said, you know, it's not about being the best dancer. I think those reality shows are fantastic, but this is about being funny and being quirky and being yourself. So we're developing a show uh, with Basement Gang right now. We've got other shows we're developing with with an amazing guy named Bone Collector. He's considered the best street baller in America. He basically is one of the pioneers of street ball street basketball. So we're developing an inspirational look at his life and also talking about the street ball movements. So you want to make a living on social media? It's not just going viral. The trick is to have an idea for making money along with your brand. If you are brand new and you want to have a voice and you want to put yourself online, you have to figure out what you want to do. And you may not figure out exactly who you are until if you want to say it in terms of season, say season two of yeah. whatever you're doing. But if you truly are entrepreneurial, and you understand, you really have an understanding of the space and you want to obviously have a career in this and not just have this be your side gig, but your full time job. I think going into it, always keeping in mind, even if you don't release a product within your first year, keeping in mind what your brand is like. If you do reviews, well, you may want to create a toy. If you're funny, you may want to create a line of T-shirts that are funny. So you don't have to do it right away. But I think keeping in that sort of 360 sort of wheel of where you're going from videos to merchandise, to live touring. I think that is the business mind because now more than ever, it's about being an entrepreneur. It's funny sometimes when I see myself like at the store on the shelf, I see like right here, right here, right here, right here. Yes, Ryan is everywhere. That's a wrap for this episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Suzanne Marquez. See you next week on The Lot.